One of the favorite subwoofers I've ever owned was this big cylindrical SVS sub that looked like a cat scratching post. Every time I used it to watch action movies, my house would shake. My wife hated it because despite the subwoofer being in the basement here, uh, she was able to feel it on the main floor. So when SVS reached out to me asking if I would be interested in trying their Soundbase integrated amp and SVS Ultra speakers, I was definitely interested. Although, between you and me, I was hoping they would ask me to review the latest, baddest, biggest subwoofer. Well, hopefully one day. The SVS Ultra Stand Mount Speaker, they are just okay. I'm just kidding guys, man. Did I give you SVS Ultra owners out there a heart attack? Come on, the SVS has been out for almost 10 years and have been bathing in the sea of positive reviews. So obviously they have done something right with these speakers. Sure, just like any speakers, there are some who don't like it, but the positive reviews far outweigh the negatives. So I am not going to go into an, an in-depth analysis of these speakers. It doesn't need any more flowers from me. There are already enough glowing reviews. I am instead going to focus on two positives and one negative observation that I have with these Ultra. Now, let me start by asking you, for those of you who own the SVS Ultra speakers, what are the two things you really like about them? Put it in the comment section below. And for those of you who are considering buying the Ultra, given the fact that you have gone over almost 10 years of available reviews online, what is that one thing you have to be aware of? In today's video, I'd like to focus more on the SVS Soundbase Integrated Amp. This is an all-in-one solution with streaming functionalities. Now, although I've reviewed a few sub $1,000 Integrated Amp, I've never reviewed one that has streaming functionality. So today, let's talk about the SVS Combo. Let's start with the Ultra, and let me put the specs up here on screen. Driving the Ultra with my Macintosh MAC6700, the Ultra has an airy and lively presentation with a top end extension that is quite expressive. A bit of warmth in the lower mid range, but a slight dip in the upper mid range. Bass is balanced in the sense that it is not super punchy speaker, nor does it dig ultra deep, rather it's more about definition. And this is interesting because in some sense, it reminds me of the Emotiva T2 Plus speaker that I've reviewed. You see, both speakers are good for both movies and music. Both speakers are not about punchy bass, but rather about bass texture, meaning good information in the bass region. <laughs> it's almost as if they expect you to buy a subwoofer for these speakers. Finally, the SVS has a good soundstage with depth and it can play loud. And in a nutshell, that is how I would summarize the SVS Ultra sound. Now, let's move on to what you should be aware of if you're planning to buy the SVS Ultra. Now, I've actually already mentioned it when describing how it sounds. Now, for those of you who follow me, in the Yamaha AS2200 amp review, the key with the amp, whether you love it or not, is that it has a bump in the upper mid range. The Ultra, is the reverse. There is a dip in the upper mid range. So for me, whether you love it or not, the key is here. With the slight dip in the upper mid range, I noticed that with certain instruments, it can sound a bit lean at times. And it has less texture when I A-B test it against my more expensive Focal 1008 with the Brim Tweeter. I don't remember coming across a speaker with voicing like this. Now, this way of voicing is interesting and can be the right solution for you. You see, I love, love speakers with a lot of clarity and detail, but it comes with a price and that is you tend to get listening fatigue easier with those kind of speakers. Now, each company deals with it uh, differently, this listening fatigue problem. For example, the Kef R7. Uh, with it, you have a slight roll off on the top end. Focals, how they deal with it? 
is they let you deal with it. Make sure you treat your room, you have some very smooth electronics, and blah, blah, blah. Now, SVS, intentional or not, okay? Let's dip in the upper mid. For some of you, it will give you a lot of clarity, but no listening fatigue. Not necessarily true for everyone, but for some of you. And for me, for me, I noticed I did not get listening fatigue with it. So now, let's move on to the positives. Okay, remember I asked you earlier to tell me two things you really love about your SVS Ultra? For me, it is really airy with lots of clarity and it has a good sound stage. Fantastic. Okay, well, that's actually three things. Now, I love the way Metal Tweeter sparkles and the Ultra is no exception. Sure, not to the level of my Focals with the Berlin Tweeter, still it has good details. And for those of you who have never tried a speaker with Metal Tweeters, you should. Now, how does it compare to, let's say, the BMW and other brands like Kef in the $1,000 range? I have no idea, but I'm going to assume it is competitive. Another interesting thing I noticed, I prefer them near feel. It sounds pleasant near feel. Now, I can go on and on about what I like about the Ultra, but let's transition into the sound base since that is the main star of today's video. The SVS Soundbase is an integrated amp that has streaming capability built in, as I mentioned before. It has a built-in DAC, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth wireless connection, a network port, well actually two, one in and one out, and kudos for that. Finally, it has a subwoofer out, rated at 150 watt into 4 ohms, it has pretty decent power. I think one of the problems I encounter whenever I evaluate gear is I always prioritize the sound first. I'm looking at the tree instead of the forest. The truth is, come on, this is $500 and it has a lot of feature and I should be fair and not only evaluate it based on its sound, but also as an overall solution. Now, some notable features are Amazon Alexa integration, support for all the major streaming services, and above all, the ability to access your favorite playlist without your phone. You access it on the unit itself with custom presets. Go read up on it yourself. Do you know of any other streamers that can do that? Now, regarding its sound, it's here where I need to set the correct expectations. This is a Class D amp, and it is good if you're okay with the Class D sound and understand that its performance is solid for its price. Look, I've gotten emails where people tell me they bought Class D amp based on my video, and they found the overall presentation a bit lean especially in the bass region. Now, I've mentioned many times in my videos that the bass from a Class D amp is not the same as a Class AB amp. Class D in general have a more neutral presentation. Even this highly regarded, more expensive purified amp that I have here, okay, has similar characteristic when it comes to the bass. Class D bass is not heavy or rich. It's more about speed and control. So. The SVS sound bass sounds like the other Class D amps I've heard in its class. It's slightly lean sounding, airy, holographic, great control of the bass, tight, has punch, but not fat. Overall, it is clean and clear, and it definitely sounds better with an external DAC. Overall, for $500, the sound quality performance is solid within its price bracket. So what do you need to be aware of if you buy this amp? Now first, there is no remote. The third party app volume control is not great. You can easily turn it up too loud, and I guarantee you, you'll be cursing a lot at the volume control. Second, at louder volume, there can be a bit of compression. And I don't think this is speaker dependent because we tried it on high sensitive speakers like the Tecton speakers, and we heard the same. So once you push it to a certain loud volume, you might hear compression. Third, I hate the blinking lights. It blinks all the time, even if I put it on standby. And in my room at night, it's like a disco light. And every night, I have to unplug the unit's power cord. Fourth, you need to break in the unit. In the beginning, there was a hint of harshness at the top end. And finally, I wish it had DLNA support. Now let's move on. So what do I like about the unit? It surprised me. Remember the ultra speakers? Due to the slight dip in the upper mid-range, I always think that I need a warm sounding amp to have the best energy with the SVS Ultra. Well, I was shocked when I paired it with the sound bass. 
what it did, it enhanced the strength of the Ultra. So what are the strength of the Ultra, you ask? Remember, it's airy and it has a great sound stage, lots of clarity. And you know what? This is exactly the strength of this amp. Airy, great sound stage, and lots of clarity. So the combo together brought out the strength of the Ultra. I was not expecting that, and that is why I always say, you never know until you plug it in. Next, I can stream to it via Wi-Fi. Now with Bluetooth, I have to keep my phone within a certain distance, while Wi-Fi, I don't have to. I can stream from all the major streaming services, Amazon, Music HD, Spotify, Kobos, Tidal, and so forth. Did you know not all streamers can do that? I also like the fact that the sound base has a subwoofer out. So with the Ultra, I can pair it with a sub. It does actually have an aux out too. So in theory, I should be able to connect an additional pair of subwoofer. So imagine three subwoofers. That's pretty cool. Now I did not try it, but maybe I should have. You know, SVS, send me two of those scratching post subs and I will let the world know how they pair with these Ultra. Finally, the unit is small and light. Do not underestimate how convenient that is. At my age, you will appreciate its light weight. So let's wrap it up. For 1,500 bucks, is it worth it? The problem today is that you can get high performing gear on a budget. The SVS sound base at 500 bucks with all its feature is quite impressive. If you think about it, okay? One box with everything you need. How many $500 all in one unit that you know have network streaming capabilities? Well, okay, there's the Yamaha WXA50 that I have. The Yamaha has a cleaner top end, but less bass output. Besides that, I don't know of any. If you do, please put in the comment section. Also, it has an in-home trial period. Now, you have to count that as part of the amp's value. The SVS Ultra speaker, now, on the other hand, it's definitely worth its asking price, even with all the $600 super performing speakers out there. Today, it is easy to get an audiophile level speaker at 600 ish but none of those budget speakers have the finishing of the SVS Ultra. It has an amazing, beautiful finish, and it feels like an expensive speaker. Now, I have to admit, it's kind of annoying because to film it, I have to really clean it, else I can easily see the fingerprints. Today, every company is fighting for a spot in your listening room, and they really have to stand out to be worth your time. Now, in terms of performance and value, I would say it is competitive. Now, why I can comfortably recommend you to give it a try, if you are shopping for an all-in-one solution, is because, as I mentioned before, it comes with a generous 45 days trial period. I always say, you never know until you try it at your home, and SVS business model allows you to try at home. All right, guys, so I think, yeah, that's about it for today. So, till next time.